Assalamu alaikum dear students. I hope you all are doing well and enjoying your summer vacations and uh, I'm back again with the second part of the chapter number six air and atmosphere. Our today's topic is the fractional distillation of air in the previous part of this chapter basically uh, we have learned the different things. First of all, we have learned about the atmosphere, then the composition of the air, and then the different types of the processes that utilizes air, and in about those processes, um, uh, different processes were respiration, resting, photosynthesis, and combustion. Now, there is a fractional distillation of air. First of all, I would like to tell you that what is the fractional distillation. Fractional distillation is basically separation of, uh, separation of the components of a mixture. Uh, we have stated in the previous part of the chapter that air is the mixture of gases. Fractional distillation of air means the separation of that gases now i think uh, and i hope that you are clear about the fractional distillation now we will read the content first air is the mixture of gases it has properties of constituent gases there is no chemical reaction takes place when the gases of air are mixed together all the constituent gases constituent gases means that all those gases from which air is composed of um, they can be separated by the fractional distillation. What is the fractional distillation? First of all, air as it is, is subjected to a part or the place where it is liquefied. Air is liquefied at a very low temperature, minus 200 degrees centigrade. So focus students, this is very, very low temperature because um, you can have an idea about the um, about this low temperature from the concept that uh, water freezes to ice at 0 degree centigrade and this minus 200 degree centigrade is below 0 as minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 to minus 100 and then man minus 101, minus 102, minus 103 and so on to minus 200. So basically I want to tell you that this temperature is so cold is so cold to liquefy the air means the air which was in the form of the gases is converted to the liquid in this section then this liquid air is subjected to the fractional distillation column here uh, the different constituent gases um, of the air liquefies at the different temperatures and they are being and they, and they are get separated at the different sections first gas that is being separated at um, the temperature that is very close to minus 200 degree centigrade is the nitrogen nitrogen basically is separated at minus 196 degree celsius and nitrogen is used to make fertilizers second uh, nitrogen is also the first most abundant gas in the atmosphere with the 78%. Um, I hope you all are uh, familiar with the percentage that we have studied in the previous video in the topic composition of the air. The second most abundant gas uh, that was oxygen. Oxygen is separated at minus 183 degrees Celsius and oxygen is used to make steel and for welding also. Um, the third fraction that is separated here is argon which is used to fill light bulbs. So basically this is a fractional distillation setup, fractional distillation apparatus in which air is subjected, in which air is um, entered in the form of the gas and then it is converted into the liquid air and then it is converted to into its different constituent gases. This is fractional distillation of the air. <clears throat> Here are the different properties of the gases in the air as we have studied many times still now that nitrogen is the most abundant gas in the atmosphere. Um, here is a beautiful picture that uh, this is not 
col colorful but also it gives you idea and it gives you uh, more uh, things to remind about the percentages of the gases in the air as the block blue color block uh, is the biggest one in all uh, out of all the blocks so it tells you that the blue colored block is basically block of that gas that is in the most abundant uh, percentage in the atmosphere and that is nitrogen 78 percent the second block after the blue block is this pinkish reddish block and this block is of oxygen and this the percentage of oxygen in the atmosphere is 21 percent the third block is this greenish yellow and this is of argon and argon you know that is 0.9 percent in the atmosphere the fourth block is the black one and the black block is um of carbon dioxide and the percentage of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere is 0.03 percent and the rest of the gases that are present in the very small amounts and the water vapors are shown by the green smallest block of all the blocks now as you have cleared now and you have uh, revised all the percentages with me now we will uh, talk about the properties of the gases first gas is a nitrogen blue and blue you can see colorless gas nitrogen is a colorless gas odorless gas means it has no smell it's inert or unreactive means it does not react more readily with the other gases its boiling point is minus 196 degrees celsius and it is used to make ammonia and ammonia is further used in a fertilizers that is why we say that nitrogen is utilized used is being utilized in the fertilizers or used in the fertilizers second oxygen whose properties we are going to discuss is oxygen yeah, oxygen as we have said that um, if we talk about the gases it's the second most abundant but if we talk about the element oxygen is the most abundant element so you have to memorize this point it is also colorless like nitrogen it is also odorless like nitrogen it is also found in sand the chemical formula of the sand is basically sio2 silicon dioxide and oxygen is there in the sand it is oxygen is also soluble in water and it forms oxides when it combines with the other mat uh, other elements um, except inert um, gases it does not form uh, oxides with the inert gases uh, or the noble gases mm, besides them it forms oxides with all other elements now uh, the third gas that uh, whose properties that uh, whose properties we are going to discuss is of carbon dioxide carbon dioxide is dense than the air it means it is heavier than the air it is used to make fizzy drinks it is also used for cooling purposes it is used as a fire extinguishers means to stop the burning process to stop the combustion process for um, uh, carbon dioxide is used um, solid carbon dioxide is white and it is also known as the dry ice the uh, first picture that is shown is basically a piece of solid carbon dioxide and uh, this carbon dioxide is known as the dry ice and it also uses to produce this smoke like effect on the floors of the shows and uh, on the floors of the programs as if we have if you have seen it earlier uh, the smoke on the floors in the different events and the functions is basically a dry ice that is of uh, white color and produces a smoke like effect now the rest of the gases is um, and for example the argon argon is one of the inert or the noble gases here is the list of all the noble gases helium neon argon krypton and xenon out of these um, gases all different gases have different colors to show that is why they are used in advertising signs helium is used to fill balloons and argon is used to make electric light bulbs here is a picture of a signboard advertising sign 
and this is glowing and glowing in the different colors because different types of the noble gases are filled in these uh, because uh, as a whole these are called as the neon sign bulbs because noble gases gives different types of the colors that is why they are used in the these types of the glowing advertising signs sign boards now carbon dioxide and greenhouse effect um, greenhouse effect is basically warming effect produced when heat energy is trapped in earth's atmosphere by gases such as oxygen and nitrogen i want to explain this statement to you dear students so that you have no confusion in your mind about the greenhouse effect um, basically when the sunlight comes to the earth basically when sunlight comes to the earth it is being absorbed by the earth some of the rays um, absorbed by the earth and this uh, these rays that are being absorbed by the earth increases the temperature of the earth means earth becomes hot because of these rays um, all of these rays uh, UV ultraviolet rays cannot go outside of the atmosphere why they cannot go outside because um, there is a thick layer of the gases around our earth have you um, remind the idea by this statement that thick layer of the gases around us so that is surrounding our earth is known as the atmosphere that is why we stated here that heat energy trapped in the atmosphere by the gases oxygen and nitrogen the rays coming from the sun to the earth cannot go outside of the earth because of these gases and these rays that cannot go outside increases the temperature of the earth and this increased temperature of the earth is basically known as the greenhouse effect here is another picture in which soils also gives off infrared radiation because of the heated effect and all these radiations remains within the earth because of there is a thick layer of the gases uh, in the atmosphere all these radiations remains within the earth and increase the temperature of the earth that is known as the greenhouse effect and the green the, the, and the main reason of the greenhouse effect is basically increase in the carbon dioxide is increased uh, level of the carbon dioxide and uh, how much carbon dioxide is uh, how much the percentage of the carbon dioxide is being increasing and uh, during the last 150 year 150 years or so amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has been increased by 31 percent and this is the huge percentage and uh, the main reason of the carbon dioxide uh, increment in the atmosphere are uh, the driving cars or the fossil fuel burnings fossil fuels are basically coal oil and natural gas and heating our homes we are trying to heat our homes with the wood coal or, or wood coal oil or the natural gas or basically we are uh, we human beings are clearing forests cutting down trees and the plants that is why uh, because trees and plants are the main main um, um, source that are uh, absorbing the carbon dioxide and reducing the amount of the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere by cutting down the trees or the plants we are basically cutting down that source that is absorbing carbon dioxide and giving us oxygen that is why carbon dioxide percentage is being increasing and increasing and increasing in the atmosphere and it, it is causing the greenhouse effect and ultimately greenhouse effect causes the global warming and global warming is basically gradual change in the world's climate because of the greenhouse effect global warming is a threat to the survival of the life because the global warming leads to the more deserts the more um droughts more floods more destruction more severe weather more hurricanes more storms 
um, in our uh, surroundings in the universe in the world more storms in the universe um, we can stop this destruction by uh, controlling the global warming and how we can control the global warming we can control global warming by uh, put a restriction by put a hurdle in the increment of the percentage of the carbon dioxide and um, and how we can do that we can do that by using less and less coal and natural gases less amount of the coals and natural gases we can um, reduce the air pollution of uh, that is basically um, caused by the more and more and more number of the transportations we can use less uh, private transportation uh, we must use the public transportation so that there are less number of the vehicles on the roads and the less um, uh, air pollution caused by the vehicles basically uh, we try to um, grow plants more and more we try to plant trees more and more in plant trees basically so that uh, there must be a large number of the sources that absorbs the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and that releases oxygen in the atmosphere that is more beneficial for the human beings and animals to um, breathe uh, and to grow and to live and for the survival of the life basically. So all these factors are those through which we can reduce um, if, uh, we can reduce uh, carbon dioxide percentage in the atmosphere and uh, that can restrict the greenhouse effect and ultimately the global warming and if 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 we are able to uh, reduce the effect of the global warming we uh, we will be able to reduce the deserts the storms the hurricanes the square weathers um, and ultimately our earth will be heavenly beautiful to live and this earth is ours and we are we human beings are responsible for its, uh, its safety and its cleanliness and its um the atmosphere so my dear students try to keep your environment clean try to uh, keep um, your environment more and more peaceful for the uh, people around you and for the animals as well and uh, with this your chapter ends and um, I would like to give you some advices that uh, try to offer your prayers uh, try to um, offer namaz uh, take care of your parents keep smiling all the day do not uh, try to try at least that you should not um, behave rude with the, your neighbors or your friends and uh, try not to be harsh with the animals as well um, keep smiling dear students Allah Hafiz